60 degrees apart. It cannot be 180 degrees. Anywhere else they can do it. Okay, so you need, you need overlap of... I see what you're saying. You it's kind of like binocular vision. Well, yeah, you have to have two perspectives of okay. the 3D analysis. The problem is that when human beings move, um, let's say we do a simple walking gait, uh, there would be times when this foot would be in front of, of this foot and this camera wouldn't see the marker. Okay. So we need at least two markers, uh, two cameras on each marker for a 3D display. Okay. <clears throat> what we do is we, we spread these a little bit more and we'll add a third camera. Okay. That way if, if this uh, foot covers that point, you'll still see it with these two. Gotcha. Okay. Now that's a simple straight walking, uh, going in one direction without not too much rotary motion. Okay. When we have a true rotary event, um, such as golf, where things are going all over the place, there would, even with three cameras, there'd be points that would be missing. Exactly. So that's why we have five cameras. So that's, that's okay. the basic format of what we do. So we grab the video. I'm just going to describe it first, and then we'll go through and we'll start doing some stuff. Okay. All right. This is a lot of hands-on stuff. Um, so we grab the video. In fact, um, I'll show you one I just did. Uh, in fact, first thing I'll do is I'll show you the five cameras. Uh, we bring up Cap TV and this little camera here. You can also do it a different way, but uh, this is very simplistic. You open it up. You set the File name, this call, I'll call this Brad1. One. One. Uh, it tells me that I'm putting a temporary path on the D file. On the D file. But we can make that anything we want. Right, so this is something you will set up. So in this case, uh, I'm going to change it. Because there's a lot of data. Now, this data path, that's going to a separate memory card, or is it, where is that? No, this is going. Uh, this goes uh, into the hard drive. You've okay. Got, uh, into the hard drive. You've okay. Because uh, I always think of C as hard drive. Uh, we took the hard drive. We split it into a C and a D. Okay. Um, because we want you to store your stuff on D. We don't want you to pull around on C. Okay. Um, so I think. Uh, well, we'll use the temp right now, but we'll create a new file later when we start doing our actual work. So temp is fine. I, I just say open this temp. Okay. Now. It tells me that the data, uh, the temp path is when you collect data, it goes into a temporary file, and then you have the opportunity to trim it down. Okay. If you don't want to trim it down, you want to save the whole thing, you just say, okay, go, and it puts it back in the temp, in the temp file, or whatever your name is, the way you're going to actually digitize it. Okay. So in this case, we have a file called Brad1. Um, next thing is how long do we grab for? We're... We're editing in the in the temp path, or do we wait till it goes? The, the temp path, path grabs everything. Grabs everything, and, and then uh, it gives you an opportunity before you actually save it to the data to, to eliminate data certain file. camera angles. Or uh, uh, you can do that, but you probably wouldn't want to do that. But what it does, is it gives you an opportunity to trim the file a little bit if you want to. Okay. The way I'm going to teach you to do it, you probably won't be trimming too much. You don't need to. Okay. But let's say you're in the field, you want to do a a golfer out in the golf course. You know, okay. There would be a lot of wasted film, so you want to you, 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 you go and trim it down to something manageable. Okay. But for most of the stuff you do, it won't be necessary. Next thing is how long do you want to capture? Well, uh, you want to capture long enough so that you get the whole event. Um, in the case of a walking gait, you're going to do about three cycles, three strides. So probably uh, five, six minutes is adequate. Seconds. I'm sorry. Right, I got you. Um, for many of the activities where we'll do TV analysis of the body part, I do 30 seconds, and I want to repeat that 30 seconds. That gives me a real good coefficient of variation, and gives me uh, a better uh, analysis. For gait, you can't do that. Okay. It's just impossible right. because of the distance. So uh, this tells me that I have six cameras on. Um, if I only wanted one camera, and I know which camera it is, I could eliminate them like that. But in this case, I want to show you that the six are actually up and running. And uh, you'll never have to change this. This is, this is in case you want nine cameras. You have to have two computers. You say, this one starts with number one, goes to number six. This computer goes seven to nine or whatever. So that's good. 
we'll say OK. And uh, one of them is a little like that. So. Camera. It's okay, zoomed. It's zoomed. Oh, it's zoomed. Zoom zoom okay. All right, that's okay. Don't worry. So we have six cameras. They're live. And uh, everything is good. Uh, uh, you can unzoom it and it can be Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. You zoomed in it. No, you didn't zoom. It was on a play mode. It's still on a play mode, probably. But now it's okay. It's yeah. It's there. Um, now I'm ready to go. I have to do two things. I have to put a calibration cube in the field and save that. Then I have to do the actual event. The calibration cube, you really have to save for a half a second. Okay. I need one really good frame. So in this case, I'm saving five seconds. And I say, OK, ready, and go. Now it's capturing. Let me just do that so we know we have something. And I make a noise. The noise is for synchronization. In fact, I'm going to cancel this, and I'll do it again. The sound is a synchronization. OK. Uh, if you're hitting a golf ball, that would be the sync point. But for gate, what I do is I tell the person, I'm going to clap as soon as you start. Don't be startled. Right. And they, they, they take a step out and start moving the second foot, and I go, boom, like that. Right. And I do it like this, because I'm standing over here now, and I can see my hands go together as well as here. Okay. So in case, for some reason, the sound failed me, I would still have this to synchronize on. Okay, so you should be in the I can camera. visually see when the, what, when the, when the cameras are, uh, are the same position. In order to digitize more than one view, we have to make sure that the camera views are synchronized. Right. So in this case, I'll start. It goes five seconds. And a really important thing is to make sure you don't drop any frames. If for some reason, the number five dropped the frame, I don't know why. Try that again. If you, if you do happen to have a cycle that drops, and God knows what happens in Microsoft anyway, if some of the things going on, you want to make sure that these are all zeros. So you have this trigger to, to, to the clap? No. I, I said I started the camera collecting with this. Right. The clap is a synchronization, and I'll show you in a second right. where that comes in. Now, um, if I say manually sync, it doesn't do anything. But if I say auto sync, and I say sync over here, now listen. It searches each film and it finds the, the clap, the loudest noise. Okay. And I'll show you what it does. So we heard six noises. We know that everything is good. Now it's going to give us the whole scale here. And then I say, OK, sync. It shows me where it found the sync point in each of the views. And I say, sync. And now we have this little graph. And uh, there's you can't see them, but there's actually six lines on there. Okay. And by going from camera to camera, it shows me where the sync point is. And what you've seen, a little differences here uh, are half frames. Okay. That's a really good thing. Let me make a little statement here. If we didn't have the sync,